Hi, beloveds. I just got off of a conversation with my friend Jane, who had some really great questions about the Akashic Records, uh, why we might want to look in our records, what's it for, uh, why do children create um, situations of abuse and things like that. They were wonderful questions. And so she's given me permission to uh, send this out to everyone so that you can um, get some additional information too because a lot of clarification came through. So I hope that you enjoy. My name is Tamala Malay, your empowerment partner, professor, and psychic. So let's get started. I would, I would guess that you would agree that in our society, in general, standing up for yourself and speaking your truth is frequently viewed as being selfish. Mm -hmm. Serving and not necessarily a positive thing that right. one would do, right? Right. Um, so sometimes, especially, you know, I hate to say it, but as females, mm -hmm. it that whole thing of, you know, you do things for your family, you do things for children, you do things for your spouse, that's more accepted mm -hmm. and that's more you're you're kind of given that like that's how you're supposed to be and when somebody does stand up for themselves or put themselves first like me um quitting my job because it was making me ill and it was i was in a loop that i i needed to break was very difficult for me because i was putting myself first and i was saying my salary that's coming in is not going to be there right now for the family because I need to put myself first. And so I just, that's, you know, personal little thing that I, I, I feel like not most people don't look at that as, Oh, well, she did something for herself. They look at it as, Oh, well, you know, she was selfish and didn't, you know, didn't put her family first. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of that really comes from uh, the patriarchy, and that's really an overused word right now. Um, but the patri came, patriarchy came in with the Adam and Eve um, a paradigm, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's when it came into the earth plane. And so it's also what we're uh, evolving, and I use that term loosely, out of we're maturing out of is a better better word um because of it it makes a one up one down right there's somebody above and somebody below right somebody's always sacrificing suffering having to be silent right something like that uh, and that that all is part of that adam and eve you know from seven thousand years ago until now right that's that's where we've been as beings on the planet um and we've ended that paradigm and so what we're doing now is we're coming into an understanding that every everyone is equal right everyone is equal no matter their race their gender their sexual preference their nationality their um, work environment um, their health status right uh, everybody and we're going to move into this part we haven't gotten there yet the earth is also important, right? So what we're moving to is every being on the planet and the planet itself is valuable and important, right? That's where we're going. Um, we're not there yet. We're like that, that far towards it, right? We got a long way still to go because a lot of people still have to make choices, right? Um, the tipping point, people always ask, when's the tipping point, right? When we're shifting uh, resonances, which includes our choices, right? How do we know that we've actually broken a cycle? It's because we've made a majority of our choices around that thing in an aligned choice. 
So what does that mean? 50% plus one. So it's not just 50% of our choices, but 50% plus another one, because that another one then is that tipping point that gives you the opportunity to say, oh my God, I can be on the other side of this, right? And I say that because a lot of people think, oh, I just need to say no once. Um, I need to not eat bonbons once. I need to have a conversation, a hard conversation with my beloved once. It's not how it works. Um, if these are patterns that you've created consistently, right? And you've got a groove, you know, I mean, it's a pattern, right? Um, those are choices that we have to keep making over and over and over again until we have that 50% plus one, which then tips the scale to where now we're on the other side and that um, energetic entanglement, right? That uh, conse karmic consequence is broken, right? But now we get to start making decisions from this place of, okay, I don't have that karma anymore. I don't have that karma anymore, but now I gotta learn how to do it differently, right? And so your act of choosing you first is the most empowered thing anyone on the planet can do right now. And it wasn't about choosing you first. It was about choosing integrity first. And when I say integrity, I mean alignment and congruency and what is right and what is integrous for you, okay? That's different than being selfish, okay? Being selfish is, um, it's like doing any of the deadly sins, right? Greed and, you know, right? All that's selfish. Being selfish is demanding you to do something that violates you so that I can feel better, right? That would be selfish. Um, me um, uh, abdicating my personal responsibility to, to do my own work, but asking you to do your work um, is selfish, right? None of those things that I mentioned are aligned or integrous, right? They have nothing to do with integrity. They're all about um, blame, shame, abdicating responsibility, right? And everything about our healing, about healing ourselves, our relationships, about how we're gonna teach our children and our grandchildren how to move forward is all about alignment and integrity and congruency, right? So we, we know, we, we figure out who we are at soul level, right? I'm divine truth, divine self-expression. I start making decisions based on that. So I, be, I come into integrity. Then I have to keep making decisions and, and make sure that my decisions are congruent with my integrity, okay? And that's where the healing comes. And the problem is, I say problem, is we need 50% plus one of all the people on the planet to start making those decisions and choices. And that's what's gonna tip us over. So that as a unified planetary community, we're all gonna move into the, um, the paradigm of Christ consciousness, unity consciousness, 5D, however you want to say it, okay? So the idea of the selfishness is really that the, we got to keep somebody down because we got to stay up, right? And it's, and it's funny because it's, it's mostly in here. Yep. I, it's not like other people are telling me that. It's, it's, I have to keep reminding myself. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It's also in our cellular memory, because remember this is 7,000 years old that this has been on the planet. It's been, in, it's been in the wind, it's been in the water, it's been in the air, it's been in the homes, it's been in the ground, it's been in the communications that our ancestors had with each other. It's been in our religions, it's been in everywhere, right? I mean, it's permeated the planet. And so of course we're gonna pick up on it, right? Remember fourth dimension is thought, so it's in the air, right? I mean, it's just around these ideas of women have to stay home, take care of the children. They don't have to be barefoot anymore. 
They don't have to do all the cooking anymore, but they damn well better know their place. Right? I mean, that's still a thing in more than 50% of the planet right now. And so because we've been in that uh, programming, I'm going to call it, um, we also take action based on it, which then continues to disempower us, right? But that action you took of stopping that cycle at work, stopping that pattern, was a very empowered choice for you because it was integrous uh, for you as far as that was the right thing for you to do at, in that moment that could have, if you hadn't have done it, that could have perpetuated continued disempowerment. Does that make sense? It does, but looking back in retrospect, it was empowering, but would have been more empowering was to have said stop to the circumstances in the moment mm -hmm. that were making me not stressing me out and giving me anxiety. Yes. Um, so what I, although it, I feel like if there's levels of empowerment, mm -hmm. right. I feel like after talking to you, um, that I, yes, I did something that was empowering, but I would have, it would have been more effective and more empowering if while I was still working, I had the courage mm -hmm. to say stop to what was happening. And instead I left the situation. Mm -hmm. Does that make So yes. I, I, you know, obviously I can't rewind that, but I feel like that probably would have, but I, I, I wasn't there. I mean, meaning I wasn't um, at that place where I felt strong enough that I could do that. And that's the point, right? You took the choice that was most available to you towards your empowerment, not away from it. And so that's what I mean when I say it was the empowered choice, because you could have chosen just to stay and continue to suffer, right? Yes. But you didn't. You took the empowered choice that you felt you could take even though it was still emotionally and mentally taxing on you because it was right i mean that selfish thing that was still very real for you um so remember i said i'm going to come back to the anger thing um, uh, um esther hicks abraham hicks if you've listened mm -hmm. to any of yeah. her teachings their teachings um they've talked about going on a rampage mm -hmm. right? yeah. rampage things through um, anger is bad is a better emotion than disempowerment, right? Disempower victimization is victimization. Anger is more empowered than victimization, right? Um, quitting your job was more empowered than staying there. Okay. And it was the choice that you could take at the time. Knowing what you know now, if you went back, you might do it differently, but that wasn't the choice that you had access to okay because we don't always have access to all the choices we would like to have we have access to the ones that are next available based on our vibrational resonance right and so you can't go from totally disempowered to totally empowered in one choice right you got to make little little baby choices to get you there and so now what you've learned and what you understand is if I'm ever in a situation where I feel this way, I know what, I know what it feels like and I know what my no is. I know what my no is and I choose to say no. And so even just going through that mental exercise, like picturing that, okay, if this happened in the future, and creating a mental exercise and going through the motions and visualizing it and having the conversation or the experience right in your head and then saying no and then feeling your empowerment and, and feeling out, okay, what would have happened at that, you know, after that, how would I have handled it? Um, that is also very empowering because the fourth dimension, our thoughts, the fourth dimension, is just as clear and just as true 
as the third dimension, as our body, as our experience. Um, energy doesn't care what dimension it's on, okay? Um, so you can actually go through the visualization, walk yourself through the thing, do the rampage. I'm just saying that differently. Um, in your mind, feel what you feel during the experience, like let yourself actually go there. And it can actually be that, that choice because your mind doesn't know the difference. Your mind's still having the experience because it's fourth dimensional, which is in our, in our thoughts, in our emotions, we can go to the past, we can go to the future, right? We can think about our past, we can feel about our past, we can think about our future, we can feel about our future, right? So they're, they're on this um, sliding scale, okay? So when we do things in our thoughts, where we have a visceral experience. That's why I said you wanna feel it, you wanna go there. You can feel your heart palpitate, you can feel the anger, you can feel the frustration, right? Whatever it was. Then you're having that experience and your, your um, energy field checks that off as complete. Yep, had that done, right? So we don't always, it's kind of like people um, people have asked me that, that have been abused, do I have to go back and speak to my abuser? They're dead. You know, I can't go back and speak to them, right? I really want, there's things I really want to say. And so we've done the exercise, calling them into the safe space, right? Visualizing them there, feeling our, the heart pounding, feeling, you know, the, the fear and the anger and the rage and the whatever, right? And then saying what needs to be said. And then, okay, getting on the other side of that and then having the experience of, okay, now, now what would I do? What decisions would I make differently? How would I feel, right? And that comes with the coaching or the therapy afterwards, right? Because that part can take as long as it needs to take, right? Um, but the choice that you made was the most supportive choice you could make for yourself at that time. So just ex accept that, receive that. Because you didn't have access to the, uh, the, the absolute no at that moment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're coming up, we're just hitting the hour mark. Okay. Um, this was really helpful to me. Um, I found it fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And I thank you very much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. I'm grateful that you were able to um, answer my questions and, and give me that kind of insight. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for their wonderful questions. They're great questions. I think it's gonna help a lot of people understand more about the work that I do um because sometimes it's hard to, hard to explain without going into things like this mm -hmm. so thank you for that and thank you for letting letting me share this with folks oh absolutely happy to happy to let you share that absolutely